next, we've got two seasoned politicians from two key states, former Democratic governor of Nevada, Bob Miller, and former Republican senator from Florida, George Lemieux. Both states are showing Hillary Clinton with an advantage here. Uh, gentlemen, and I'll, I'd like to begin with Senator Lemieux. Did Donald Trump do anything to convince undecided voters from where you stand to join his camp last night? Well, Liz, I think he did a good job at the beginning of the debate. He made his case in a pretty persuasive way. Unfortunately, the comment about not accepting the results of the election has dominated the news cycle today and probably is distracted from a good performance at the beginning of the debate. What I really think he needs to do now, if he wants a chance to win this debate, this election, is he needs to tell the American people what he's going to do as president. Speak right to the camera in a commercial, since there won't be any more debates, and tell the American people he'll lower their taxes, he'll bring good jobs back. He'll make the country safe. This is the closing argument portion of the election. He really needs to make his case to the people, for those that are left that are undecided, and to convince Republicans to make sure that they go out and vote on Election Day. Governor Miller, uh, I, I, I think Senator Lemieux is right. He had that opportunity, um, and yet he kind of doubled down on the, I'll only accept it if I win. A little bit of that was tongue-in-cheek. But uh, his son, Donald Trump Jr., said something last night to Fox News, where I, I, he said, the United States presidency would be a, quote, step down for his dad. Um, so I'm just wondering, who, who does that bring in? Which voter does that bring in? Which group does that, that sort of, uh, I guess, crystallize and say, I'm with that guy? Uh, only the ones that are already supporting him would think that that was a positive comment, that it's a step down for him to be the leader of the free world. And it, last night's comment about... Uh, not being willing to say in advance that he accepts the results of the election it isn't as problematic as the earlier statements and the ones he continues to make that the election is rigged. You know, we have 60 percent of the nation's governors are Republican. Are they involved in some rigging? Uh, all, most of the secretaries of state who are in charge of elections in the individual states are Republican as well. They're not involved in any rigging. Uh, it's uh, historic in the respect that it's the most negative comments we've seen from a presidential candidate about the process in the history of the country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, we showed this yesterday that two-thirds of the key battleground states are controlled by uh, state governments that are Republican. Uh, Senator Lemieux, let me get to the Hillary Clinton issue because there have been new emails that, again, do not show at least the way she might look at the position of being president of the United States in a very flattering light, that once again the Clinton Foundation was getting money possibly simply by trading favors, and, and it just doesn't pass the smell test for even many Democrats. Well, it shouldn't, Liz. The, this whole Clinton Foundation and all of the information that's come out from the release of these emails and what we knew before is that this was a pay-to-play system, and it should make the American people sick. It should be something they should focus on here in the last uh, 18 days until we have the election. But unfortunately, those emails have not really gotten the attention they deserved because Donald Trump on his side uh, has been making uh, a lot of very unforced errors that have been even louder in the, in the marketplace. And those errors have drowned this out, which is a shame because what's gone on with the Clinton Foundation is completely unacceptable. Uh, Governor, the, the big event was in your state. How is your state doing? And, and when you take the temperature of voters on the ground, and of course taking into account that you're a Democrat, uh, do you think that there is a belief that the so-called more of the same, meaning two, two different uh, you know, groups, uh, eight years of President Obama followed by another four years by Democratic leadership is something that will improve the lives of people who live in Nevada. I think they're looking at the candidates individually without regards to you know, who's been in the White House for the last eight years, who's been controlling the, the Congress, et cetera. Uh, there's about 42 percent of the registered voters in Nevada are Democrats, 29 and 29 percent independents. So obviously, the independents play a very key role. Uh, if Democrats show up to the polls and vote Democratic, mm. uh, Secretary Clinton, you know, should win Nevada, and that would seem to be the indication in recent polls, et cetera. Yeah. But like any election, it's the get out the vote.
uh, and on a comparative, I can see that the Clinton campaign is very organized, has been here for a very long time. Uh, you know, Trump's uh, campaign is probably a little less organized in Nevada, uh, and I would think we, that the chances of him winning Nevada uh, have diminished in the last uh, couple of weeks. Yeah, leaning Democrat here, and uh, it's a pretty amazing development, certainly as we watch with 19 days left. We want to thank both of you, former governor of Nevada, Bob Miller, Thanks. and former senator from Florida, George Lemieux.